What is up guys, welcome to me in the video and today we are back on Need for Speed Heat for another episode of Stick or Twist. If you're new to the channel, BAM! Those are the rules, read them. Pause it, do what you gotta do. So I have my random number generator up on my left and you guys can actually see it in this video how times are changing. There's 132 cars in the Need for Speed car list and we are going to generate the first number. <laughs> A hundred and eight. Okay, so we landed on the Lamborghini Cooch. I reckon we're gonna spin again. I don't think I actually want to use a Lamborghini Cooch today, uh, just because I already have a video on the channel about it. So let's go ahead and twist for another number. Ninety-one. The I A. Oh, disgusting. Right, we get one more spin. Just in case if you didn't read the rules. And whatever we land on is the car we have to use because it's the third spin. So let's go ahead and do this. The final spin is number 16. Okay, I don't know whether that's a particularly good thing. 16, what is 16? It's a Mustang Fox body. I mean, it could be worse, I guess. Now I actually haven't used this car since 2015, so I have absolutely no clue if it's any good or not. We're gonna find out in a minute. Now that is saucy, raw sauce. <laughs> is it just me or the front? That front end kind of gives me escort vibes. I don't know. Maybe it's a meters doggy, because I'm not a real car guy. The exhaust is kind of hidden under the bumper. That's really weird. I'm not gonna lie. I'm really pleasantly surprised about the customization options on this car. <laughs> Filth! That is <laughs> filthy, bro. Ugh. There's actually loads for it. I'm gonna quickly just go through some of the options that surprised me. So the hood was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know whether that's new. I don't know whether that was in payback because I didn't really play much of payback. But that part was like, wow. As we go around, the rear had loads of options. There was loads of exhaust options. Like, I don't know if they were there in 2015 or whatever. But I was just surprised by the amount of options on this car. And I put a little bit of a wrap on it because I was really surprised. And I was like, wow, this car really should have wrap on. Now, one thing I haven't touched is the performance. This is where the car is going to transform into beast. So we have the stock V8, the flat 12, the upgraded V8, a V12, a V10, a V8, and another V12. Uh, I, I mean, the obvious option is just to max it out and put the V12 in. But the flat 12 is a bit nutty as well. Let's go ahead and uh, smash the V12 in. Boom! Now, I'm going to quickly go ahead and all ultimate plus the ting. Three, two, one. This car so far has been full of surprises. So for some reason, and I'm pretty sure this is one of the very few cars which actually has this trait, but the supercharger is actually better than having the turbos and stuff, which I thought was a little bit mad. For those that are wondering, uh, I have all track suspension, track tires, and a track diff in, so same setup as usual. I wanna take that into the open road and actually see how this handles. One would assume, because it is a Mustang, it will handle like a boat. It's not as fast as I thought it was gonna be, not gonna lie. Let's go ahead and smash all this like somewhat up. Where is this gonna stand in our little kind of mini top gear table? I'm not so sure. Let's go ahead and take it to Rare Bear so we can um, benchmark it against all the other cars. I am quite interested to see what this is actually like. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds bloody fantastic with that supercharger. Every, every, all the other cars are turbos, so there's no reason to use a supercharger, but this sounds fan dabby dozy. Benchmark time for a good car is around a 255. If this Mustang gets anywhere close, then it's done good. Now, honestly, I've not given muscle cars a real proper try in heat. I've tried a lot of cars in Need Speed Heat, but I haven't tried many of the muscle cars. This definitely handles like a boat. It's very, very heavy. It has a drift bias too, for sure. I'm gonna do a little bit of a guesstimation and say three minutes. Look at the lines, look at them angles. This is literally what Stick and Twist is about. It's out trying the fat boys. Come on. Oh, look at that understeer. Skid, go, 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 go. We're coming in to the third lap with a 2.03. It's definitely gonna be a three minutes, I believe. I swear this happens to me every fucking <gasps> video. Oh. I'm gonna whip my hair back and forth as the gamers would say. 
look at how much that's gone wide, bro. Holy shit. Punch kick. It just doesn't want to move. It's so weird. Oh, you just... <laughs> stick and twist. More like stick and bad. Right, first lap, 104. I feel like this is going to be the one. I've got a tingling penis. <laughs> no, I didn't even mean to say that. Stick and twist. More like twist and stick. This is most definitely going to be the final lap. I think the more important question is, what time is it going to come in at? And we're coming up to the final straight. It is definitely a slow one. It's not like an RSR time, but I didn't expect it to be in the first place. We're going to come up to the final straight here. And it's just done a 3 one Now, there's a few little mess ups in between, but I think that's probably a respectable time for the car. It's not going to be blazing the leaderboards anytime soon, but it was definitely decent. But not bad. Like I said, engine swaps do make a big difference in this game. I feel like they allow cars to be a lot better than they would otherwise, which obviously makes sense. But the one interesting thing about this car, similar to the MX-5, is it actually starts off with a straight bang in the middle on the performance matrix. So let's go ahead and go over to the performance, switch out the track tires for drift tires as well as the diff etc etc oh this is such a bad idea what am i doing oh go up come on uh, don't let me go all the way around you good oh, what a farce an absolute farce i tell you now the thing is with these cars that are smack bang in the middle of the performance matrix is they're versatile cars that you can use in night time. Obviously in night time you can switch your performance parts in and out and it's much more important about having a versatile car instead of say a fast car or whatever. But it's a lot better if you can do both drift events and race events and if the car is more versatile in night time. And you know what? Yeah, this is pretty good. This is is actually very good. Dare I say it, this actually might be one of the better drift cars that I've actually used. I'm not going to sit here and say it's OP by any stretch of the imagination, but... Wow. Someone needs someone in the comments is going to be like, well, I can't believe you didn't crash it because it's a Mustang and Mustang crash. I am a nerd. Yeah, definitely not fast, but very, very good at getting sideways. I reckon if you're looking for a car to do nighttime in, not only just the normal race events, but drift events as well. Uh, this could be the one or even maybe if mixed speed list come at some point I seem to get very surprised about how good the cars are Smack bang in the, in the middle of the performance matrix like I said, I don't want every car to be OP That's not really the purpose of a lot of them being there Customization is one of the reasons purely by itself You should buy this car, but then the fact that it can do this what the Oh, that is insane. 500k, the target was 150. You know what? I reckon this is good off-road as well. Look how weird it looks so high, man. It's so weird. Three, two, one, source. Now, like I said, I don't think I've actually covered off-roading much capacity in this game, but I don't mind it, honestly. Like, I feel like they've done off-roading pretty well in this game. Now, keep in mind, it's quite, like, drift-heavy. I honestly didn't really think about that too much. I just kind of used what parts I had available. Available. You know what? This is actually a really, really decent all-rounder. Whether it's the best in the game, I'm not so sure. I haven't used enough cars to say. But, oh my god, it is definitely up there right now. I'm going to go out on a pretty heavy limb and say, so far, out of all the cars I've used, this is the best at all the things. Off-road, drift, and uh, race. Move out my way! This is quite easily the best car I've used for all three. Vladimir, move out the way! Oh, this is actually going to be a really close finish. Move out my way! Oh no, he's taking me on the inside! Vladimir! I do want to quickly say, look at that. It's like all the way to drift. Could have been a little, bit, a little bit more in the middle with the right parts. I didn't have the right parts on me. It couldn't be asked to go back to the garage. But I just want to say... This is actually a really good all-round car. If you're looking for a car that can do off-road, drift, and race, you can take it into night time, switch all the parts out, and it can do well, I am really pleasantly surprised about this Fox Body Mustang. Give it a go. Good shit. It's been your boy, Strove If you enjoyed this video, make sure go ahead and hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have been awesome. Stay safe and peace.